All right, I forgot to turn the tape player on. So what we did was we took the first one that we had here, the first div, and we copied it five times. All right. So after we did that, we copied it five times. It looked just like this. All right. Then to distinguish between these, we put in, I've changed a paragraph back to a div, and we've got Tom Brady's team for the first one, then Aaron Rodgers' team for the second one, then Pat Mahomes' team for the third one, then Case Keenum's team for the fourth one. And then, da was it Dak Prescott or Zach? Uh, I don't care. Dak Prescott, then make it Ezekiel Elliott, not yours. So that'll be Dak Prescott's team. And then the last one will be Ryan Tanner Hill's team. Although after last week, maybe it's Brock Osweiler's team now. All right. All right, so again, the last one will be Ryan Tannehill's team. Now, we still have a little bit. It's not really a problem, but it's sort of a problem, okay? And what do I mean? Look on the screen if you would. It doesn't look any different yet, okay? It doesn't look any different, all right? But the problem is we don't have any heading up here, correct? So let's put a heading up on each one of these. Again, we don't have, do we have to do that? No. I, we're, we're just kind of making this up as we go. So right here, right after this, first div, we're going to put in here, we'll put an H4 heading in there. And we'll have it say New England Patriots. And I'm not sure if H4 will be the right size or not. We'll know in just a minute. All right, I can always make it smaller, you know, knock it down to an H5 or make it bigger if I want to or need to do that. All right, second one will be Green Bay Packers hat. The next one all right the next one that's in there will be Kansas City Chiefs hat Next one will be Denver Broncos hat. And the last one will be Miami Dolphins hat. Oh, I'm sorry. Dallas Cowboys hat. Then Miami Dolphins hat. So Dallas Cowboys hat. Finally. Miami Dolphins hat. <clears throat> All right. Now, how is it looking? Well, put that down there. Still not looking very good. All right. And we're going to fix it right now. How's that? The way we're going to fix it is we're going to go back up, and each one of these top divs that we have in here, we're going to give it a class so we can style it. Each one of these top divs right there. So go up to each one of these divs that are at the top and say class equal, we'll just call it item. All right? So take that and copy that to the first div on each one of these. So you will have that in there six times.
Now, here's a question. If I run it, is it going to look any different at all? No, because we haven't styled yet for a class of item. We're going to do that right now. We're going to put a style in there for a class of item. All right. So if you go back up to your style tags here, again, we can move this out later, but we're going to say dot item. And we'll put a border. Put some padding in there. Make the width a certain size. We'll float it to the left. Put some right margin in there. Set a height. And we'll do a text align center. All right. Now, you're typing, but just let me run it first and see if it looks the way. Okay. And don't worry. I know it looks. Ugh. We're going to fix that, too, in just a second. But uh, hopefully you agree it's looking at least a little bit better. All right. If we wanted this on top, and maybe you do, maybe you want it up there. If you want it on top, we just, we're just going to have to move. Right now I've got the image, then the H4. If you want it on top, put the H4 above the image. Do you understand what I'm saying? All right. So if that bothers you, and I don't know if it does or not. So go put that stuff in. We're going to fix the problem with the images in just a second. It's a simple fix, but we're going to apply it six times. I'll wait until you say you've got this all put in. I am going to maybe maybe it will look a little nicer so I'm going to move those uh, h4s above the images Again, you can do that you don't have to do that but they are headings so maybe I figured they should go up above the pictures Now let's look at it. I think that's a little better. All right. Maybe it is, maybe it is. It's not really that big a thing one way or the other. But let's fix these pictures. All right. And I want to show you how to fix it, but I want to show you how to fix it using the new Bootstrap 4 stuff. Everybody looking? Doesn't matter which one. Let's just start at the top. All right. See where we've got this image here, and it says this? Everybody see that? Just add on to there. Class equals IMG dash fluid. All right. Take that, copy it, and put it right before or right at the end of each one of those images. Now when I run it, let's see if it looks a little nicer. All right? It's looking better. If I cut down the size of my screen, there they're all on the same line. Okay?
any questions whatsoever on what we've done so far. Oh yeah, just because of the, it's the yours looks like this. Yeah. Yeah, it's just because of the size of your browser window. Oh. I mean, notice I can keep doing this. Uh, okay. cool. I I can still get more. You know, there's three. Yeah. So it's that's fine. Don't worry about that. That's okay. All right. Now, my question for you is: When I asked you to do this before, did you all make a folder called store? All right. Then, if you would please, in that folder that's called store, that right now, I believe at least, all we have in there is a file that is called index.html. We got to drag that images folder that I sent to you. Let's drag that in. It is, yeah, you, well, you can unzip it first or after, but you want it unzipped. Correct. Then take the folder, copy it into your store folder. So again, right now in store, all I have in there is index. Now I pasted it in. Now I have images. These are all WebP files. They're not JPEGs. They're not pings. Everybody hear me? They're all WebPs. So if you look up on the screen here, what we'll want to do next, and you'll want to do these to all six, all right, we want to change our source. We don't want it to be this. So let's just take it from the top. Let's see what we call those. If you look up on the screen here, oh, wrong one. They're called Broncos hat, Chiefs hat, Cowboys hat, Dolphins hat, Packers hat, and Patriots hat. All right, so we'll come up to the first one, which is our Patriots. We'll change this to images slash Patriots hat dot web p now let's see if that worked all right i think, it's the, I think the, the p oh it's because i wrote image not images <laughs> there it is see that it isn't it is not i don't know if that's what, what you were saying or not it is not case sensitive all right so the second one, we'll change it to images slash Packers hat. Unless you're Tony, because Tony will have only, he'll have six occurrences of a Patriots hat. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be that or bust. All right, so when you're done then, well, I guess I didn't do the Chiefs and the Dolphins right. Oh, Dolphins hat. And for the Chiefs. Chiefs hat. All right, so when you're done, it should look like this. Again, yours may be over two lines. It doesn't really matter. That's why I put the div back. 
instead of the paragraph? And, and if you have a blank space there, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's not a big thing. I mean, we could go nuts here. If you look up on the screen, we could give each one of these things, would you agree with this? We could give each one of these things right here their own ID. Then we could make the, we could make the background here New England blue, and we could have the writing in New England red. So we could do that. That's not the goal of this. So, I mean, if you really wanted to go that nuts... And the Packers would be green and gold, etc. I will tell you, it would look pretty damn ugly. I've got the RGB for the Packers. We made a Packers, pack, I call it Packer Backers site, like I said last week for Forbes. The one that they said they never got. Now, if I go and save this, I think it's been saved. Yeah, it has. So if I go in here and I run this, so if I hit my F12 key, all right, and I'm going to bring this down just a bit. There we go. And I'm going to add, notice it's giving me Pat's hat, Packer's hat, Chief's hat, Dolphin's hat, Cowboy's hat, and Broncos hat. So there is some recognition that's going on already. Does that make sense? Now, if yours doesn't do that, the first thing to do is to go back. If you look on the screen, make sure you changed all those data IDs. Make sure your data IDs are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And if you say, well, mine is. It's still not doing it. Then go down and look down here and make sure that you've got the same code that I've got down here. That's the only two things we've changed, so it should be one or the other. only going to get to a certain point today. We'll finish the basic functionality of the shopping cart tomorrow. Then we'll go in and we'll start adding bootstrap, you know, because we'll make it look not just a little presentable, we'll make it look fairly nice. All right. Then what my hope is, is once we get done with all that, let's say it's Friday, okay? Uh, the other thing is tomorrow, like I told you, I've got to give you that second written test. Remember the one on networking? We'll review that right before we take the test. All right? But if we can get that done by the end of the week, then I don't think that's too much for me to ask. It's a little bit of review for you, for you to go back and turn this into a full-fledged website. In other words, you can have this be the home page, or you can make your own home page. You'll have just three pages, a home page, an about page, and a contact page. And on the contact page, make up any kind of form you want. Does it sort of suspiciously sound like what we were doing when we made our MVC page and we had home, about, and contact? Kind of see why I'm doing this? If for some reason your still doesn't work, I can run my code off for you when we get done. All right. How long 
right now we're keeping track of stuff, but tech technically we don't have a shopping cart. Everybody hear me? We are keeping track of stuff, but we don't have a shopping cart. So let's make one. For now, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an array, and I'm going to call it shop cart. The other thing as we go through this is maybe not all the time, but typically, if I click the if I click the button add to cart, you're all listing, right? If I click the button add to cart, how many am I going to add to the cart? One. Yeah. Isn't that that's typically how we'd want it? All right. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to say, you know, I've got this item info stuff, and right now it has this stuff in it, the name, the price, and the ID. But I can make something up right here too. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say item info info dot qty for quantity equals one. All right. And since I've got this array right here that I'm not doing a thing with, all right. Then what I can do is rather than logging this, which is okay to do, and we will still do it, but before we do that, I'm going to say shop cart. Oh, and that, do we want to be real picky here? Should that be a big C? We can do that. Yeah, I mean, that probably is a good idea. So shop cart dot push item info. Then from my console.log, this becomes shop cart. All right. It's going to be JSON in a bit. Is that the next lesson or the one after that? I don't remember. So I'm going to save this. I'm going to run this again. I am going to hit my F12 key to bring up the log console, and I'm going to start adding things. And you'll notice it says there DOM string map. Notice, look at all the information that's in here. Hat's hat, price, ID, and quantity. Everybody see that? Right now, it's not smart enough to know that when we did this again, to just keep up there what we have, but change the quantity to two. So it made another one. See how we've got two of them in there? And that's what, what it's doing now is it's showing me the results. It's showing me what's in the array. Does that make sense to everyone? Yeah? I said, I broke this up into a bunch of lessons, so I wouldn't go nuts with it. What's that? Would you wear like this specific design hat? Probably. I, whenever I mow my lawn, I wear a Packers hat. Yeah. Well, with this head, if there's any kind of sun out at all, you know, it's... I think I'm missing anything right now. We'll see as we get going. Okay, I have, we're now going into lesson seven of 14. All right, so we're about halfway done. I've only printed out lessons one through eight. 
So when we get done with lesson eight, we'll take a break so I can print out lessons nine, 10, 11, and 12. All right? <clears throat> One thing I want you to understand, a little bit later, we're going to write a function in here. All right, we're going to write a function. And we'll, we'll first, when we write it, we'll write it out here. Don't, don't type this in, but we'll write it in like function output. All right, and then we'll have a bunch of code in there. Does that make sense? All right, but if you notice, what I want you to notice out of that is do you notice how that function is not inside of document.ready? See that? So we'll take it and we'll move that into here. That way it will be able to access everything we've defined in here. All right. Now, it may or may not look like it, but technically there are some problems with this the way that it's currently written. You probably don't see them, so in my own way, I guess, I'm going to show them to you right now. That is, right under this line where you've got item info dot quantity equal one, put in a couple blank lines and we're going to put in this. The dollar sign is a shortcut. If you don't want to use the dollar sign, you've got to type in the word jQuery. Okay. Most people don't like to when they, you know, J Q U E R Y, one character versus six. Other than that, it really buys you nothing. I really don't need this line I commented out a long time ago that just did the console, so I'm going to get rid of that. All right. Remember, when I just ran this, it looked like this. Okay? So it looked like this. DOM, string map, etc. All right. Let's see if that's changed. So I've saved. Let's run it again. Again, I'm going to bring up, hit my F12 key, and in my console log, You see, it doesn't look any different. It actually is, but it's not much. All right. Now, we're going to have a problem in just a minute. Because what we want to do is if I click another Green Bay hat, so if I click this again, all right, I want that to say two. Would you agree with that? And we're going to change, we're going to make that happen. But... You may or may not remember this from the days of JavaScript. Remember this thing? JavaScript expects that everything you put in is a string. So if I go and add two hats, now instead of having one and adding another one, instead of having two, I'm going to have this. All right? I'm going to 
close. I've got so many of these things open. I'm just going to close a bunch of them. That's better. All right. So let's go back into our JavaScript slash jQuery stuff that we've got in there. And let's see. What do I have to change? Well, I don't know if he's that smart or if he guessed or what, but one thing that Colin asked about was, is this going to be a JSON array? JSON is JavaScript object notation. We could write this as one of two different kinds of arrays, a JSON array or an XML array. And, you know, if you say, well, what the hell is XML? I'm not going to bring it up. Do you remember when we when we went in and looked at web config? Remember that file, that web.config? That was an XML file. Remember how we had to put a, a bracket thing around our connection string that said connection string? All right, that's XML. With XML, you make your own tags. All right, most, most people find JSON a little bit easier to work with. All right, look on the screen if you would, please. If I click right here, if I click right here, right now, if I haven't done anything yet, what that should do is that should go and that should basically, you know, create a new entry for me that says I want one of those hats, right? If I click here, it'll do the same thing. Then if I come back to here, it shouldn't give me a new entry. It should take the current entry and change the number that's in there, the quantity, from one to two, correct? That's what we want to have happen right now. All right, so in our code that we have here, after this, after we create this shopping cart, we're going to put in an if statement. Right here. Everybody see where I am? Under the document ready, var shop cart, then right here, I'm going to put in an if statement. All right. Now, the, the problem is, if we're working on the client side, please listen to this. You don't have to look, but please listen. If we're, look, if we're working on the client side, we can't hook it up to an SQL server database. Everybody hear that? That only works with stuff that's on a server. That's why it has that name. But there's something that was added in HTML5 that you may or you may not have heard of. And it's called session storage. So look at it. With web storage, session storage, it doesn't matter. Web applications can store data locally within the browser. Now, why is that a good thing? Since it stores it locally within the browser, if I've got a website that's got five different pages on it, I can go from page to page and get all that data. I don't have to pass it from page to page. That's really nice. Typically, if you're using a language like PHP, there's a lot of passing that goes on, a lot more than you'd want to do. Before HTML5, application data had to be stored in cookies, included in every server request. Web storage is more secure. And large amounts of data, 5 meg, can be stored locally without affecting the performance of your website. Information is never transferred to the server. So the only person you could hose up is yourself. And there's a little bit more about it in here too. But if you notice, virtually every browser supports it. All right, and I'm not going to read this. You can look if you want to know more about it. All right. All right. Again, we only want to do something here if we've got something to do. So in other words, unless I'm clicking the go to cart button or add to cart, there's nothing that should happen. All right. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say if session storage 
and I could just call it shopping cart, but I'm just going to call it SC. If it's not equal to null, and again, I just mentioned to you what that means is there is something in there. All right, put a message here. I E, there is something in there. All right. Shop cart equals, and this is case sensitive, JSON dot parse session storage. So what I've added has been what you see there in gray. It doesn't yet. We're going to build that in the next iteration of this. Colin just asked a very good question. He said, how does it know what output card is? Right now, if we ran it, it wouldn't. Because output cart does not yet exist. Because I'm going from top to bottom. All right, so technically next, I would probably go in there and write that. But I wanted to check and make sure I had no errors in my code first. All right. So again, I want you to understand this if you look on the screen. It may sound really, really simple, but it's, it's probably the most important thing that what we've done so far for you to understand. And that is, if we click each one of these six things, it's going to create a brand new entry in a shopping cart for each one, and they'll each have a one in there. The way this is written right now, if we go back and click this one again, now what's going to happen is it's going to make a seventh entry in there. I'll have two identical entries, each with a value of a quantity of one. What I want to do is rather than doing that, I want there to be six entries, and all of them have a quantity of one except that one, a quantity of two. Does that make sense to everybody? Is there anybody that does not make sense to? So how do I know if there is an item in the cart or not? I'm going to make a variable, and, and I'm just going to be you know, unbelievably, unbelievably good with my names here. I'm going to call the variable item in cart. Okay? I can make it just about anywhere, but I'm going to make it right where I need it. So I'm going to put it right up above this dot each right here. And I'm going to make a var item in cart. Now I'm going to assume there is not an item in the cart. So I'm going to make it false. So I just added that right there. I'm assuming there's nothing in the cart. All right. You may or may not know this. You may or may not have realized this. I don't know. All right. But this, see this thing right here? We wrote this a long time ago. That's, that's jQuery's version of a for loop. That's going to loop through everything that's currently in my cart. Dot each. All right. So after this var thing that's in here, function index value, yeah, that all looks good. All right. But now I want to check, while I'm in this each statement, I want to do an if in there.
And now there is something in the cart. And I'm not done yet. I will be in a second. Yes, it should. This is where I said we'd have the problem. That if I put in one, the quantity will be one. If I put in another one, instead of the quantity being two, it will be one, one. So we have to do a parse int on both of these. Now we could run it. I don't even know what would happen if we ran it. But the point is, we only want to push something to the cart if there's something to push. Does that make sense? All right. So if there is something in the cart, remember this? Instead of saying this, don't type this. If item in cart equal equal true. I'm asking you, what's the shortcut for this? All right. If that's the case, then we want to push it. Okay. That's the first thing that we want to do. We will want to do a console in just a minute. We've got two more lines to type in. Actually, a couple more of them, but that's fine. Now, we can come in here and we can write our function output cart right there, but we're going to move it anyway, so I'm just going to put it right there. So function output cart, and for right now, it's not going to do a flaming thing. Let me save this. Let me run it to make sure there are no errors when we try to run it. So F12. Add to cart. All right. As far as I can tell, it looks okay. Now, we're going to take another break because... I've got four more lessons prepared, but I didn't print them out. So I'm going to go into the other room. I'm going to print those out. And it is 2.31. Oops. We've been going a while. We've been going since the last, you know, 45 minutes. So we will take a break. It's 2.32 right now. Let's come back, please, at 2.42. All right.